Hello, my name is Penny and I'm an internal medicine trainee at Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Woolwich and I'm going to give you a very short presentation about research opportunities in the time of Covid. So my background is that I went to the University of Southampton, I did a master's at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and did the academic foundation programme at GSTT. Um, now I'm an internal medicine trainee at Woolwich and I'll be going to GSTT in August. So with any piece of research, whether it's during COVID times or not, um, the, an easy way to start is to try and find someone who in your department or um, a consultant who is good at research or you know is particularly good at publishing, has a research department or a group, research group, um, someone that you know is good at pushing things forward. Um, Network and if you're moving to a new department or a new team, let it be known that you're interested in research or that you're interested in doing some projects and tell people about your previous experience so that they can um, share their ideas with you. And also, um, whoever you're going to end up working for or with, try and find out if they're a starter or a finisher because um, if they're more of a starter, if they've got great ideas, you're going to be to need to be the one who will push that forward and finish, end up finishing the project if they just come up with the idea. Although you'll need to be going to find people and asking them what their ideas are, if they've got anything going on, it's also important that it's something that you're interested in. Not only for your um, motivation to get you to finish this project, to get you through all those hours of doing some boring data collection, but also so that will be useful for your CV in that it's um, targeted a bit towards whichever specialty you want to go into. Um, also, you need to try and keep abreast of what's happening in the field of research, in particularly COVID when things are changing so quickly. Um, it's, it's good to know what people are already publishing, so um, subscribe to the BMJ, to the New England Journal of Medicine, I find medical Twitter is quite useful when things are changing so rapidly and um, things are coming up on Twitter before they're being published. Also, when interesting things are published, people do share that on Twitter quite quickly. Similarly, in your departments, when things are protocols are changing, we're deciding how to manage people differently. Um, it, when these things are changing, it's a good opportunity to audit or to do projects on how this change has affected the department or flow through the department or uh, patient outcomes. And during this time, a lot of different hospitals have done, done quite different things, even in the same trust. So it's um, um, that's another uh, good opportunity to do some quality improvement or audit. In terms of um, specifically COVID research, um, there are lots of things um, that you can look at, in particular in COVID patients. You could, if there's an interesting patient, you can do a case report or look at the demographics, for example, BAME staff outcomes, compare patients who manage on the ward versus going to ITU, look at their biochemistry or microbiology. Um, also, we're finding these patients have a lot of VTE. You can do something in that, or as we know, also patients having specific related rashes also being readmitted. Um, these are just some ideas for you. Um, with with any of these projects, if something is new is happening, um, if you want it to be a good piece of work or get it out into a good journal, um, you either need to do something very quick, so get something out, get something out new very quick and that can stand out from the rest of the things out in um, publications or you take a bit more time on it and stand out by having a very big data set or you could have kind of a niche very specific topic um, and another idea would be to look at something more qualitative so how this pandemic is affecting medical students or foundation doctors along with this um, you you need to look at your ethics. So I know it's really boring and ethical approval just takes so long. You just need to think about this before you start your project. Um, and if you're unsure, just talk to someone more senior about whether they think this counts as 
research or not. This is a really helpful table that I've used that comes from the HRA. And you can just go through this table and have a look at, do you really need to get ethical approval for your project? Um, or can, is it actually just a, a clinical audit that, that doesn't need any ethical approval and which actually will save you a lot of time? When presenting your research, um, think about this just as you start your project, about where you want it to go and whether you think you can just present at a de departmental meeting, whether you're going to aim a bit higher, um, try and get it into a conference into, um, or write it up as a paper. Just to bear in mind, um, at the moment, lots of conferences as well as journals, they're, expe uh, they're accepting submissions that are specifically on COVID, so they'll have separate sections. Um, and I know I've just put up this little um, screenshot of the EUGMS. They uh, have got a separate section for their conf upcoming conference just on COVID topics, and they've just extended their deadline if anyone's interested. Um, similarly, journals like the Journal of Hospital Infection, they usually do this small um, section of practice points, which are kind of shorter articles um, with smaller data um, kind of sharing information and that was previously about reducing gram-negative bacteremias and now they're opening this up to specifically COVID um, pieces. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that um, if you're submitting to a conference as a poster, uh, conferences are less likely to be face-to-face -face now, they're more likely to be virtual conferences and don't be surprised if they say we've accepted your poster please send it to us and they just pop it up on their website. So if you have any other questions or you'd like to contact me, this is my email address. Um, but good luck with um, all your research during COVID times. Try and um, find, get in contact with people who are good at research or are good starters who have good ideas and then just drive that project through. I think during the time of COVID, you can really even though it's been a pretty horrible time and there's been a lot of disruption, I think we can learn a lot from this. Thank you.